Welcome, foolish mortals, back to the Villain's Lair. I am so excited to have you back here today as we go over another Disney villain. You're probably thinking, Nikki, why? Why do you co keep focusing on all these Disney villains? Because I'm a Slytherin, and I can. So there. So, um, today's villain in working up through our spooky, spo spooky fall spectacular. Who? Okay. You know, you're laughing. Say that ten times fast. All right? You know? Spooky Fall Spectacular um, is Oogie Boogie from The Nightmare Before Christmas. And I'm so excited to go over him because he actually has a lot more story than I thought he did. And it gets crazy, guys. But it's super fun. So here we go. Oogie Boogie is based on the Boogeyman or Bogeyman. Go figure. I'm sure you're super shocked. And he is voiced by actor Ken Page in all of his incarnations. So in the Nightmare Before Christmas video games, I think there's two or three of those, and in Kingdom Hearts and in the movie, it's always him. I'm not sure if Oogie Boogie has any speaking lines for the Disneyland um, Haunted Mansion overlay for Halloween Town. If he does, he must be voiced by Ken Page because I believe there is some kind of contract where... Um, Ken Page gets to do Oogie Boogie every time they use the character, which is pretty cool. I mean, that's a, that's a great way to make sure you've got some job security, right? So, let's see here. In Oogie Boogie's early days, he actually used to have his own kind of bug-themed based holiday that as human beings came to forget this holiday, because why would you not want to forget a holiday all about bugs? I'd be That'd be pretty quick on my please forget soon list. And apparently it was in Oogie Boogie's story as well because people all forgot about this gross bug-themed holiday which made the holiday itself disappear. So it no longer has a door in that little circle of trees that all have the doors in them that are all the different holidays. Oogie Boogie's is not there anymore because his holiday has disappeared. Now, he didn't disappear along with his holiday, so he looked around, decided Halloween Town was the best fit for him, and went ahead and stayed there. Unfortunately, he is a very Napoleonistic sort of guy and decided that since he fits in so well with Halloween Town, he's going to try and take it over. Now, the monsters in Halloween Town are overall not bad people. They just scare people because it's their job. That's literally in the Halloween Town song, right? So they just, they just, that's how they display their skill at what they're good at, at what they're born to do. But they really don't have anything vicious in their nature. They just have a very different perception of what is cute and what is pretty and so on and so forth. This is their way of expressing themselves. Oogie Boogie, on the other hand, not being naturally from Halloween Town, is actually legitimately evil and actually does seek to do harm with his uh, gifts. So, when he tried to take over Halloween Town, he was, of course, thwarted by your hero and mine, Jack Skellington, who kicked him kind of out of Halloween Town. He's still in the Halloween Town world. He just is kind of banished to the dungeon that we find him in in the Nightmare Before Christmas movie underneath the clubhouse of Lock, Shock, and Barrel, where he's kind of stuck from then on. The members of Halloween Town don't really interact with him. He's very, very isolated, and he turns his whole little underground dungeon where he's banished into some kind of weird casino dungeon hybrid, and it's it's weird. Like, it's kind of like when I was a kid and had never been inside a casino, this is how I pictured casinos to be. Um, really looking back, I wasn't that far off. The difference is, I guess, Oogie Boogie's place probably smells like a lot of gross things and smells a lot less like tobacco smoke than a casino does, but overall, that was kind of how I pictured casinos. Um, now that I've been in one, there's really, I mean, there's a lot fewer dead bodies, but that's really about where the difference stops. So, you know, there you go. So he's isolated in this casino where he's just waiting for his revenge on Jack Skellington, whom he has now come to kind of fear because Jack did go ahead and defeat him before. Now, a boogeyman is a generally masculine. There are a couple boogie women out there around the world, but mostly they're boogeymen. Um, it's kind of monster. Its physical appearance changes um, based on the culture or even the individual household in which the story of the boogeyman is being told. It's generally a monster who punishes 
ill-behaved children. This is a story often that parents will tell to their kids, and there's actually a version of a boogeyman-type monster in every culture. So parents like scaring their kids, I guess, into being good. So it's kind of the classic, you know, if you don't eat your soup was one example it gave from one country, then your boogeyman will burst into the house with a sack on its back, bundle you up, and haul you out of there like Krampus. However, unlike Krampus, the boogeyman doesn't usually drag you down to hell. The boogeyman in general will just eat you, which actually is better, but not by a lot. So there you go. You know, still an undesirable situation. So this might persuade little Jimmy to eat his soup like a good kid. There are even like songs. Well, what do I do with this child? And then this is the boogeyman's going to come get him. And it's, it's crazy. Like I didn't expect there to be this much boogeyman folklore, but it's from all over the world. And while many different cultures have different names for it, there's this kind of creature in almost every culture. So it was really cool to kind of do that research. That was pretty funny. Um, let's see. It's also kind of seen as a non-specific kind of personification of terror or dread, often also um, kind of a way to refer to the devil himself as a boogeyman. I know, I don't like the boogeyman either. Oliver doesn't like the boogeyman, guys. Do -do -do. Well, let's see if we can cheer him up. Um, Let's see, the beginning of the word bog or bug, spelled B-O-G-G-E or B-U-G-G-E, means something frightening, scarecrow or goblin or beetle. And it may be related to the legend of the bugbear or bugaboo, which was a goblin or scarecrow that would take the form of a bear, because a goblin or scarecrow isn't scary enough, and then it would eat small children. In this case, naughty children. And as seen, and he's often seen as kind of a general object of dread, like the boogeyman. So this is just kind of one of the different versions of the boogeyman. And the reason why I bothered to mention it is I do think that this was kind of the version that was drawn upon for the boogie man in the nightmare before christmas for oogie boogie because again it mentions um scarecrow which if you look at oogie boogie's skin it's kind of it's i mean it's it's basically a burlap sack and so while most of these legends mention a monster that wraps children up in a bag and drags them away or a scarecrow which are generally made out of some kind of burlap as well. So I think they borrowed from that for Oogie Boogie's skin. And then, of course, there's the obvious ties to a beetle, bug, bugbear. And um, so that's his whole insides. Basically, rather than being one organism, Oogie Boogie is kind of a hive mind of multiple bugs with one lead bug in charge. It's gross. Really gross. In the movie, Oogie Boogie hears Jack's plans to take over Christmas, and he sees it as kind of his second chance to take over Halloween Town, because the only person in Halloween Town that Oogie Boogie really fears is Jack, and he knows that this Christmas escapade is going to keep Jack busy for a while, gets him out of the way. He grabs Santa Claus via lock, shock, and barrel, and kind of takes him down into his creepy casino that I mentioned earlier, and tortures him, attempts to take him out in order to kind of work his way to the top. It's one less holiday kind of mascot to have to deal with in order to get his own holiday, which, as you recall, he's lost. So he really doesn't belong where he's at, and this is kind of his way of trying to take over and get a holiday for himself. Of course, uh, Jack saves Santa, and Santa squishes the lead bug, the bug that is in charge of all of the hive mind nonsense, as a uh, Oogie Boogie's whole real form of being this large mass of insects kind of is revealed. In Kingdom Hearts, Oogie Boogie is part of Team Maleficent and is seen scheming for the greater purpose of helping the Heartless take over all of the worlds. This is really the only time I could find where Oogie Boogie kind of plays as part of any team. He generally works towards his own self-interest, and you see more of that in Kingdom Hearts 2, where despite Maleficent bringing him back from the dead, he just kind of blows off her orders and tries to take over Christmas Town on his own. He really is not interested in what she has to say about plans. He's back to working just for himself, which is kind of what we see Hades do also in the Kingdom Hearts games. He doesn't like being part of Team Villain. He just wants to do his own thing. As a primarily selfish character, Oogie Boogie is pretty close to that as well. 
He is motivated by greed and, frankly, way too much time on his hands to dwell on his selfishness and his desire for revenge. Rather than being grateful that Halloween Town took him under their wing as a town that he didn't belong to and they took him in anyway, he really is just resentful that they have a holiday and he doesn't, and he's trying to take over and take their holiday for himself, which is extremely ungrateful. Like, it's, it's so selfish. It seems like, you know, hey, you don't belong here, but we're going to let you come live with us anyway, even though we really don't have to. You'd think that that would be, you know, meaningful to a person, but who can say how bugs think? Apparently, since he's thinking with his bug brain, who knows what he thinks, but it just is irrational. It seems like, uh, as a previously homeless holiday character, he'd be pretty grateful to be taken in by the Halloween towners. Apparently that's not the case. He's very, like I said, very Napoleonistic. He wants more. So that is today's villain of the week for the villain's lair, and it was really fun to talk about him and learn more about this character, because having just seen it as kind of a watch-through of the movie a few times, I really couldn't see any particular reason why Oogie Boogie was trying so hard to take over Halloween Town. He had basically a mansion where he could be as creepy as he wanted, he gets to partake in the festivals. I just did not understand his motivation at all, and so by doing more research into the character, it really did show me, at least, a lot more of why Oogie Boogie is the way he is and why he's so mad. So, now we know. On a side note, it is almost time for my monthly giveaway to my patrons, so if you're one of my patrons, pay attention. This is our giveaway for September. It is X Revenge. It is an enhanced avocado oil lip treatment um, jelly shot lip quencher by Incredible. And basically it's like this crazy like clear lip gloss that has a flower on the inside of it. I'm not going to open it and show it to you because I want the seal to still be on there when I send it to the patron I give it to, but I've looked up different pictures of it online. It's pretty cool. It almost looks like the lip balm is made out of glass and you can see like what looks like a little daisy in there. It's really, really cute and adorable. I do have one of my patrons is male, so he's probably going, well, what does this do for me? You have a wife, so she has lips she wants to win a lip balm. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those names on the 1st of October for our next week's reward and send that out to whichever patron wins the prize. So I'm so looking forward to that and it was fun to do kind of a reveal of this month's product. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll look forward to talking to you on next week's Villain Slayer.